Hi, my name is Scott Chamberlain. Um, I work for OpenSci, and my Twitter is right there. <clears throat> um, today I'm going to talk about stay puffed, uh, object validation and serialization, and in addition, uh, should this even be a package? Um, so one of the pain points in programming is um, serialization, um, converting data uh, in one format to another format, and it's especially painful when those uh, data are complex. Um, other languages have uh, good ideas, right? So if we're confronted with the problem on the previous slide, you know, what, what kind of solutions are already out there? Um, you know, if one place to look is in the language that we're talking about, R. Um, uh, but in addition, you know, similar languages like Python. Uh, there's a package in Python that's quite widely used called Marshmallow. Um, sort of, it, it addresses this exact problem for, you know, serializing different types of data, uh, different, uh, serializing data into different formats. Uh, and a quick example is, so uh, at the top of the script, we're importing various things um, from Marshmallow. Um, we're defining two classes, an artist schema and an album schema, uh, and, uh, where uh, the album can have uh, many artists within it, right? So here we define a Bowie as a dict, and so David Bowie is the sort of the artist, and then an album is a dictionary with a number of fields, including with an artist nested within it, and then we can define a new object from the album schema called schema, and then uh, uh, serialize that album, that dictionary into, in this case, uh, basically a, just a, a dictionary, even though it started as a dictionary, but it, it's validating the data that was passed into it. Uh, and then at the bottom of the script, we can see, uh, in this case, they've we've given a date as a string, whereas it, it's really expecting it to be a date as you can see in the album schema defined above. And in this case, it, there's a validation error because we, we passed the wrong type of, of thing that was expected. So coming back to R, um, there's similar-ish um, stuff in R. Uh, there's the asserter package, which is actually an R open set package as well, um, validate and error locate. Um, I don't think any of these really quite address the problems that we're sort of, we're gonna be talking about here. Uh, but let me know if I've missed any others. Um, so you can get the, um, check out the package that we're going to talk about here at rpnsize slash statepuffed on GitHub. Uh, so an example of statepuffed, if we think back to that example we just did, this is a somewhat similar one. So we load up, load up statepuffed, we define a schema, um, this is R6 um, at the top here, so it might be a, somewhat unfamiliar if you're not, if you haven't used it before, but uh, so we define a schema, and then we, we define three fields, just like we did before in the marshmallow example. So we have a number with a num, a UUID, and then a, so this field called foo. And so the first one is an, we want to be an integer, the second a UUID, and the third a Boolean. And so then we create a list, uh, which is sort of our equivalent to write a, a named list, which is our equivalent to like a dictionary in Python. And then uh, the first is num, uid, and foo, and we, we have those those expected um, values. And then we pass it to um, my schema, and we dump JSON, and we get that, that JSON back, and the data is validated. So the, all the data was good in that first case. But in the second case, let's say we, we re reassign uid to foo, foo dash bar, and, it's, uh, and then we call load on my schema again, and then it's... Um, it's not a value ID, so it errors with the validation error. And then we can do the same thing with a Boolean where uh, foo is expecting a you know, false or a true, uh, but we gave it a string called stuff, and then we get a validation error on that. Um, so in another use case, we can convert um, each, each sort of object to an S3 class. So this is a pretty uh, useful feature, I think, where we define um, a schema like we did in the second example, but you can see there's this additional post load um, uh, line here where we actually define a function where we want to take, um, instead of outputting, like we did in the previous example, just a list um, or JSON, we want to actually create an S3 class from the input that the user puts in. And so, uh, and then we define a print method for that S3 class, print.artist, and then we can define um, 
a list of lists, a list of named lists specifically, and then we can convert that to JSON uh, and then pass that into the schema. So this, this use case is sort of uh, representing a common use case probably in a lot of uh, users of R uh, where you, know, you get some JSON and you have to serialize that into something in R. Um, and so um, here we load that, um, that JSON into our, our schema load JSON function, uh, and then we can get back these, these S3 classes. So, so, so why, you know, what are the use cases that uh, State Puffed would be used for? I think data validation uh, is a pretty obvious one. Lots of potential users uh, in, in that use case. Um, remote data sources um, can change often. So, um, you know, there's a lot of packages that are, you know, pulling in, in R, uh, that are pulling in data from APIs or FTP servers or whatnot. So we're scraping potentially um, and so that's a, um, again, data validation step. Um, use in scripts would be pretty important, help raise issues with scripts um, as time goes on and maybe inputs change. Um, and then um, potentially, you know, there's an increasing number of people using R uh, with Plumber to make actual APIs serving, serving data from R itself. Um, and this would be a good use case for that. Um, to do, uh, there's nested um, nested data is one of the actually the main things I wanted to create Stay Puffed for. Um, it works somewhat, but it needs it needs a lot more testing. Um, it'd be good to add more custom field types that are specific to the to the research and science domains. Um, some examples that we have are URL and email, but it'd be great to add other ones. And then I want to add support for user defined fields, so sort of whatever the user may need and want to want to validate. Uh, and then probably add a sort of easier to use interface that's not really, it's not so much R6 focused. But should this even be a package? Um, let's walk through that. Um, when should I not make a package? And I'm not talking about, here I'm just talking about uh, me personally. I'm not trying to talk about anybody else uh, in particular at all, uh, but just to talk about my experiences and my thought processes when I'm going through uh, making a package. Um, so does this, does a package um, solve actual use cases, right? Um, uh, is there significant overlap of the existing solutions? Um, if there isn't, then great. If there is, um, maybe that package um, hasn't been touched in you know 10 years, and then there's a good reason to create a new thing that does, even if it's very similar, right? Um, and then, uh, and then you know, are there you can't look at you know a single package in, in a vacuum, right? Are there what else is going on in your in your career, your work? Uh, you know, are there higher priority things that, are, that need to be worked on? Are there lower hanging fruit that are that are also could be could be fruitful? Um, so these are just a couple of the considerations um, for use cases. Um, I think I had talked a little bit about in earlier slides. I think there's a lot of use cases. Everybody, a lot of people are validating data, or you know. Um, serializing op an object um, from one thing to another, so I think I think that it's pretty clear that the use cases are pretty solid um, uh, for this for this package. Um, and you know I'm, I'm definitely not against silliness. You know, CalSay is something that me and a number of other people have uh, created, and that's not I wouldn't say that's solving real world use cases, but it's definitely fun. Um, and then uh, the elephant in the room that some of you have probably been thinking, looking at the examples so far is, well, you know, S, are you just recreating S4? Um, and I've definitely thought about that and considered it, but I don't think it's, I think it's sort of like recreating some of S4, uh, but then, um, you know, with additional features and it's try, trying to solve uh, specific use cases that are, are not, I think I think of going beyond what S4 4 does. Um, and so here's a quick example of like you can set create a class called BMI and you can say like what what fields you want to be in this object weight and size and you can say what types of field those are supposed to be and then you can create a field and then it'll validate the, that input. So it's pretty similar to some of the data validation steps we were talking about earlier with State Puffed. But like I said, I think I think uh, state-of-the-art use cases are sufficiently different. 
Uh, and so um, in terms of higher priority, lower hanging fruit, uh, I've got many other packages. So, um, you know, it, it's taken a, probably a year and a half that I've, since I've started working on this, uh, started working on Stay Puffed. And so just work, you know, there's lots of work to do on other packages. So this has sort of taken a, some time to, to get to even where it is now. Um, and then, you know, the other packages I work on have many users and they're reporting bugs and, you know, so there's a lot of existing sort of maintenance and other packages. Um, so this one's taken a while to get to. Um, and and then, then there's this, this last bullet is about like how to determine, you know, what kind of impact the package is going to have and does that, I mean, that potentially influences your decision to work on a package, right? You know, if you think the package is going to be really helpful to, um, um, some people, or especially a lot of people, then that that would make you more willing to probably work on that package, right? So, but it's it's sometimes hard to judge that. Um, I think one way I think about in potential impact is you know are, are the potential number of users um, pretty pretty large, and I I think that's the case in in this case uh, of this package. So, uh, but we'll see. Um, so um, the Stay Puff future is pretty unclear, but if you're interested, uh, the repos at arpensize slash Stay Puffed and um, the uh, slides and uh, PDF version is at uh, scotttalks.info uh, slash Stay Puffed. Thanks.